What goes on in the head of a student that fails to learn? Donald Hebb asked questions like these when working as a teacher in the early 20th century. He later went on to become one of the foundational figures in modern neuroscience. Our Neuroscience and Education Special Interest Group follows in the footsteps of people like Hebb. We believe that the great challenge of improving education should be met with systematic research that combines traditional theories and methods with the ever-growing science of the brain and mind. Our interest group members come from diverse backgrounds from teachers to scientists united under this cause. Let's take a quick look at some of the research our group is doing. Human and Moral Development in Education, HEMD, focuses on the origins of moral values. We are particularly interested in how empathy and moral sensitivity emerge within the brain. It has often been thought that moral values are socially constructed in the minds of children. But is that the whole story or even the main story? For example, to what extent are parental values and attitudes interweave with the children's neural temporal dynamics as captured by the EEG? In the context of early childhood education, how and in what ways does a young child's learning environment, such as daily interactions with educators and playing tablet games, modulate their learning and brain development? The research projects that we have funded by the Australian Research Council were dealing with different facets of cognitive perspectives on learning, uh, behavioral aspects in terms of what goes on in classrooms, but also particularly with neuroimaging and brain sciences aspects. Where we see some opportunities now with the brain sciences work is to kind of triangulate a different angle. It gives us a way to maybe be able to not just say what they learned, but perhaps why they learned, or maybe why they're having difficulty learning in certain ways. The notion of productive failure has been articulated by uh, Professor Manu Kapoor. Uh, initially, uh, Manu uh, explored uh, this approach uh, with students learning about physics, Newtonian physics. Uh, he's gone on to be focusing on learning in mathematics and statistics and having some very exciting findings there. Um, in my work with productive failure, we've been focusing on the use of um, computer systems, computer modeling, 2D systems and 3D systems for learning other areas of science. If we really can articulate and understand ways in which um, innovative approaches for learning and teaching such as productive failure, how they operate, to demonstrate that they work, we might be able to start to envision really new ways that we could be recommending for teachers to be teaching a range of subjects. Basically for the last 15, 20 years I've been an academic and frustrated with the way that we've been teaching the students, the experience both from the staff and the student perspective. And so really I think the learning sciences and the understanding of the neuropsychology behind this is truly important as an evidence base. The students come to university full of beans, very excited to learn stuff, and they fall very quickly into a right learning and fairly dull environment. So we strongly believe that at a creative engagement approach, we actually provide them with some creative outputs for doing stuff associated with science, can engage them in the learning much more deeply and contextualise it for them. So things whether we're using creative coding to do um, very nice data visualisations or getting students to be creative around writing stories or narratives or making videos, etc. This kind of approach seems to be quite successful with the students. I think the exciting thing about the CLRI and the Neuroscience Initiative is understanding how these things actually can affect learning. Whether it's gimmick or it works, we don't really know yet. So this is one of the great exciting things to find out.